All right, chancy pants. He's a nutter. Right, we're in on a Saturday morning. We are going to get a caustic brew done today, seeing as we never got round to it yesterday. I didn't leave here with Craig until like uh, half past seven-ish, something like that. So uh, what I will do is, because I'm short a connector, is I'll wire one of these elements direct to the solid state relay. And I also want to get in the thermocouples, which we've got on this cable here. So we've just got to finish these off. And then I've used this telephone cable as signaling wire so we can install the flow level indicator on here and on the HLT to isolate the switching signal for the solid state relays if there's no liquid in the tanks which will prevent any accidental burning of the elements. As we know, I'm not sure if these float level switches are going to stand up to being in boiling work but they will be removable so it's just going to be a case of pulling them out, cleaning them, putting them back in if, uh, if they get a bit cruddy which I'll do the same with the elements anyway. So I'm going to just stick the radio on and I'll crack on with that this morning and I'll give you updates progressively through the day as we get on and then when we start to pull some caustic out then, uh, then we'll video that as well. Right on. <laughs> day has really cracked on and it's my fault that I didn't pick up much video to be honest. Uh, we've got the control panel on. I've spent all the time wiring up the uh, float switches for the HLT. So we've got the HLT running at the minute. You can see she's sat at 55 degrees. She's doing well. We can turn her on if we like. And of course we need power up here and uh, then she'll be on up the top you can see we've got the little indicator light there i need to change these out for 12 volt ones because they do say dc ac dc on them but you don't get illumination like that with the dc so we'll see what we can do with that because that's running on 12 volts uh, so yeah hlt on hlt off like i say it's nicely up to uh, 55 degrees We've got the pump, the pump strainer, I welded that on today as well. And then we've also got the uh, lever valves. I also made a little harness for the cables, which lift the cable off the wall, off the floor, sorry, so it's nice and tidy. And then on the boil kettle side, we've made the, uh, oh my God, I've tightened that up. Yeah, from the boil kettle side, we've managed to get that perforated steel pipe that Andy sent me. And what I've done with this, so I'm able to clean it, is I've made a bung for one end, which screws off. So I've got line of sight, straight down the middle. There you go, just a lovely little bung. And then we can just see straight through her to clean her out. When the valve's open, we can anyway. Shall we open it? There we go. Let's have a look at that. That's a good shot. And then uh, on this side as well, here, I used, I welded a thread onto that also. So we can grab over the pipe and, well, I've not tightened that up yet. But yes, you know what I mean. You get the gist of it. We can unthread this pipe also. And again, remove any blockages that we might have in there. Really nifty little piece of kit now. This has turned into a good filter. So this will be the first point of filtration. Big enough to let 
some hot pellet particles through, small enough to trap leaf hops. This side, pump side, we've got this pump protection filter as they're called, I believe, and that's got a 750 millimeter micron filter inside and when that clogs up you turn off the valve supply you turn off the feed you undo that clamp pull the crap out clean your filter shove it back in you're not going to get any blockages which is a real concern on a brew day so if there is a blockage that's where she's going to happen because that's the finest filter that we've got in the system Right chaps, so while we've got that recirculating, the HLT's just uh, going round and round now, we're going to weigh out some Chloroquest, which is a really nasty chlorinated uh, caustic cleaner, which will basically do the inside of that, the world of good. And then we're going to transfer that from each tank all the way down the line to the last fermenter, and then we'll rinse them all out, and then maybe tomorrow or on the brew day we'll follow it up with an acid rinse definitely wants a water rinse anyway but while we wait for this recirculation to finish I'll show you what I've done for the float switches and of course the thermowells so let me just grab the bits and we'll run through it one by one so first things first we've got the float valve Indicated on the top there, there's a little reed switch on the inside. We know where the top is because I put a mark on. And all we have to do is just slide this little float onto the piece of equipment like that. And when this is engaged, it closes a reed switch on the inside, which allows continuity through this little cable that I've welded on here. And eventually we'll send a signal through to the relay that it's okay to power the solid state relay so we're just going to wrap this in a little bit of PTFE tape make sure I put it on the right way not too many turns on this because these do wind quite far in there we go and then what I've done is I've created an inverted uh, plate to go on the RJT fitting. So when we screw this into its little housing, we'll have as much of that reed stem exposed as possible to allow the float to drop properly and collapse. So that just wants tightening up and inserting into the tank and then connecting to this little XLR cable that I've got there. And the second little thing we've got is a Thermowell. These were like 2 dollars on eBay or Amazon, can't remember which. And it's a stainless steel socket basically. Just a little well for you to stick your probe in. Some people screw the probes direct, you see, into the boiler or HLT. I don't like doing that because not all of the probes are stainless steel all the way down the thread, believe it or not. I've got one over here, you'll see when we put this in, a bit of rust on it. And pretty much the same thing with that. You've got the Thermowell on an RJT fitting, so when we do that, that will be safely inside the tank. Let's get them on. Right, while the pump's working away down here, I'm just going to tweak tweak the uh, connectors on this float, make sure everything's in the right place. Oh, hello. I'll do. Hello. We've got number one barman on today, boys and girls. Hello. No, not Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got more hands to do it. Only just one. Only just. So as we were saying, oh my gosh, we'll just undo this nut. 
like so. We can remove the blank. And then at the bottom, <laughs> Biff. at the bottom, we're going to have the float valve to protect the elements. Not sure I know which way I want that facing. So, pretty much that marking has to be at one o'clock. And then we can crank it down. Nice and tight. <coughs> and then, same thing for the thermal well up here. We're going to have him on there. Bit more crankage. A bit of Jimmy crankage. Ah, that's nice and tight. And then you'll see what we've done here. So we've got the probe. Just slides in nicely. There's the rust I was talking about. Look, if you can see that. So even though the shank's stainless, the thread, Im's rusty like petal. And then this piece, this all goes. Oh bloody hell. I'm oh, back to the drawing board. My solder's come undone. So as I was saying, this now is ready to be connected. And I've just created this little bad boy up here just to push him in and screw him on thus keeping everything ah that would have been handy if I'd have put that around the back of there wouldn't it ah. and then the probe can go nicely into its probey home Right then chaps, gloves and a face mask on for this one. This is the stuff, Chloroquest, sodium hypochlorite. It is nasty, nasty stuff. You do not want this on you. But, if treated with respect, it's a fantastic cleaning solution. So I'm looking for about a litre to a litre and a half. Right, that looks like a sweet spot. Lid back on. Always a good idea as well. Rinse off any spillages. You can never be too safe with this stuff. Right. So we're going to take it up to the top now and put it into the boil kettle. Make sure all the valves are closed. And then we're going to start to transfer the hot water into the boil kettle. And then we'll recirculate. Right folks, we've got the water turned off. I solved the boil kettle closing problem with just a little bit of square bar. Just easily to shut it, rotate, tighten up the wing nut. I'm hoping that's sufficient for holding in the CIP fluids. So we're going to take the spray ball off, nice and warm, transfer it across onto here. Just have to get a two inch RJT seal. Always seems to be the last thing to cross my mind. Put the seal on. That's hot. Nice and hot. And then obviously we're venting out the chimney so we don't have to worry about blowing the tank up. And then we're going to go around the other side, turn the water on and pump all that hot liquor into here.
<laughs> we've got steam coming out the chimney. <laughs> How awesome is that? Right, see a few spots where we've got a bit of a leak happening here between the hinges. But that seems to be going back in. Don't seem to be anything around here to uh, too worrying. A little splash there. Nothing too bad. I suppose I could put a couple more of these on if I had to. We just have three little rotating arms. I'm sure that'll work. This is quite convenient actually. And then if I just wind it back a bit. We'll have a little sneak peek. No doubt I'll get wet. Yeah, there we go. Close that, because I am now wet. But I've not had a shower this morning, so every cloud and all that. Right, this is very encouraging. So, I'm going to leave the lid on there. That's got now caustic in there. We'll set this the supply up for a second round the other side to draw the caustic out the bottom of the tank. And then roll over, baby, just keep recirculating. Nice to see that there aren't any splashes coming out the top, really, to talk about. So uh, we don't have to worry about losing caustic or getting splashed in the face with it. And then we'll take it into the fermenters and do those. What I do have to be careful about is making sure that you've always got a vent open on the tank because recirculating hot fluids causes expansion and you can blow your tanks up. I nearly did it once with a big 2,400 litre tank. I had it closed. I started recirculating at 20 degrees C and the temperature rose to 64. And when I had a look on the pressure valve, it said uh, 40 PSI. It might have been higher than that. It might have been closer to 60. So I opened the blow off vent quick as I could. Fortunately, there was no disaster, but it could have been terrible. Right, there's the alarm. Kill that, kill that. Craig has brought me a pint, look at that. It was like a pint of milk. <laughs> so, that's the boil kettle. Add its treatment. Let's see if I can just zip it. Oh no. Yeah, that's what I want. I'll go this way round. Still hot. Right. She's ready to rock and roll. So we've wired her up to the mash tun. I'll turn it on and we'll have a look at it spinning. That's what we want to see. So that's uh, the caustic going into the mash tun. We've got an audience for it, look. We're assessing this beer from Almasty. What's it called, Stu? Uh, double dry hop Simcoe Pale. Double dry up Simcoe Pale. Now that is milky. It's been on stillage for three days. Tastes nice, but fucking hell. Tapped it on it's Wednesday. like orange juice, isn't it? I tapped it on Wednesday. Tapped on Wednesday as well, so yeah. it's had plenty of time. I like to say, I'll oh, know in half an hour. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was Sam that tapped it. Right, we're on the third tank. Actually, the fourth tank. So we're chucking it into this fermenter now. What I might do is turn the fermenter on and see if it reads the temp nicely. And as soon as we get water dripping out of this hole here, then uh, there we go. There we are, look. So I know we're getting full, so there's enough in there. We bring this bad boy around. And then we can recirculate just out of that tank. So it's turned the cooler on because it's gone in there at 47 degrees. Look, so at least that's picking the temperature up, right? Yeah, Let's get a RJT ring. So, something we've noticed is there's no ventilation for these tanks. So, what we're going to have to do tomorrow or Monday, before we brew anyway, is put a vent into the lid of the fermenters so when we are recirculating we're not going to explode the tanks like I was talking about earlier and I can't vent here if 
my tank's that full of cleaning fluid, which uh, will be a problem. We're recirking, just like that. Right, we've achieved sanitation, or at least caustic cleaning in the boil kettle, the HLT, and one of the fermenters, and the mash tun. So that's done, that's done, that's done, that's done. Just needs a rinse down and uh, an acid. So we're gonna call it a day. I think we've sussed a solution for the vents on the lids until, so I, it's not gonna hold me back next week. Be able to uh, do it quid pro quo. Is that the right term? Yeah, we'll go with that anyway. So we're gonna fuck off for a beer. We'll see you tomorrow. If I come to work, that is. I might have a day off because I've had massive achievements this week. So I think I deserve it. But I will be brewing next week.